Welcome. This is the July 11th Beehive Production User Call. We have Patrick Andu Jan and myself, Michael, and I have a few quick announcements and Patrick has some a, a, a small breakthrough. So the EuroBSD Con schedule is up and there's quite a bit of Beehive content. Uh, Chris M from these calls has a tutorial, which sounds interesting. Check that out. And the previous D Weekly snapshots arrived just a few minutes ago, and I believe there are some 9PFS uh, fixes such that you can grab a VM image and use it as a client because the server should be fine, but you just need to set up a Beehive 9P device and po point at it. I've put some basic documentation in the wiki. And also from release, en release engineering, Colin has made a post about changes to the FreeBSD release schedule. I've got a link in the doc and it shortens a few things and looks back at the history and has a nifty schedule out for several years. Take a peek if you care. And this keeps coming up. And well, here we go. Talk to your members of parliament, Budmistag or Congress about the need for live migration. I have responded to a thread from a, maybe nine or so mo months ago with John and other sponsors. And I sure hope if anyone's out there listening that those who have some mid progress FreeBSD live migration code, please wrap that up. I know that Illumos now has the, I believe, Propolis Rust based user space with live migration. Uh, let's catch up. Thank you very much. And barring any other little news items, Patrick, it sounds like you had a small breakthrough figuring out why VNC broke in TrueNets. What you got? Yeah, thanks again to Jan, who helped me to nail the culprit, at least, in last week, I guess. Yeah, last week. And, uh, Thank you, Jan. Uh, the feature of uh, TrueNets Core comes with a built-in web VNC client in the UI, so you can install a Windows VM or Linux uh, right away. Uh, by just using the UI without any external tools. And that broke uh, in their last 13.3 beta. They pulled in all the FreeBSD 13.3 updates uh, into their code base, which uh, delivered some long expected BI fixes and improvements in various other parts, but it broke VNC which was difficult to reproduce because uh, FreeBSD does not suffer from this bug. And with the help of Jan, I found out that they, they actually added a feature to Beehive, uh, an additional option named VNC server. And it looks like they implemented a VNC to no VNC, whatever that is, lightweight protocol or something, proxy integrated into Beehive and used this in their web UI. And if you hack their middleware to not just not use that feature and instead configure a frame buffer and a TCP socket for VNC, then regular VNC works just as it always did with Beehive. So we can at least use TrueNAS Core with VMs and install Windows, et cetera. But uh, yeah, the, the VNC client and the UI is broken. Uh, hmm. um, now the, the next step would um, be let him finish. Excuse me, I just, my my question would be: Is there some module or plugin or extension system present in Beehive to add features or different services, or did they, by necessity, actually hack the the Beehive implementation to add that stuff? You took the words out of my mouth there. Like, can we have Spice or RDP or something else? But go ahead, Jan. Um, so, uh, if I understand it correctly, no VNC is basically a VNC client uh, implemented in it with HTML5 and JavaScript. And to work in a browser, because you can't open arbitrary sockets, it has to work of a web socket. So, I assume they have implemented the server side, which is probably mostly a web socket wrapper, proxy, oh, okay. whatever. Um, I don't know how much translation happens there on the server side. Could be from just repackaging the packets into a uh, web socket packets uh, to uh, pre-converting stuff, whatever. I don't know how much logic is involved. Um, the best way to find that out is probably to uh, look into the repository and 
find out what the diff yeah. is. Maybe it's easy to fix. And preserve that feature. And if we can have just the web VNC component working, um, basically adjust the web VNC server so that you can have that accessible. I think it would make a nice port to FreeBSD to just have a Beehive VNC web interface yep. on FreeBSD without the rest of the middleware load. Well, here's my question with this: Is all the? I mean, yeah, uh, no VNC is basically just a web-based. BNC client. So I'm wondering if they're just loading that up, attaching it to the VNC socket, you know, socket. And then since the socket's now occupied, you can't get access to it. Is that all that's going on? Because I know, I for instance, I know, for instance, at least on uh, my Lumos machines, uh, when I, you know, when I make that socket available using uh, whatever NC, I want to say, is what we use for that. One person gains access to the socket, and then no one else can until they give it back, which makes sense, I think. Multiplexing VNC just... would be uh, a bit harder. Well, and screen sharing would be nice, but that's a whole different topic. Yeah. Let's get the basics. <laughs> Go ahead. So I can just show you what they're doing in the UI. If you go to Visual Machines, yep. Windows 10, my Windows 10 machine has got VNC configured for every Unix C system. I simply remove the emulated VGA device entirely and use serial consoles. And then you have VNC over here. Nothing happens because of protection by Safari. And then they open a new tab. That's interesting. I didn't have that in my last test. That's really nice. So it works. It's currently but, working. All right. Now I understand. Another forum member on the TrueNAS forum reported that after my fix, removing their uh, VNC server option altogether and replacing it with TCP, uh, VNC even in the web browser works again, but all the colors are switched because order RGB is now GRB or whatever. Okay, but it's a web, VNC so combined, that's, which happens that's to work. That's nice. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah. So trippy, what but the f fuck? Color so, order. This, this, this is color, color order. Okay. Yep. If you, again, this is not IX systems code as they deliver in the current beta. In the current beta, the VNC screen does not update at all. So you, yeah. the, the VM yeah. seems to receive some input. If you have another channel to observe what the VM does, it seems like it's getting keystrokes and a little bit of mouse events and stuff like that. But the display does simply not update, not at all. So mm -hmm. you're blind. No worky. And then I removed that IX systems provided option and replaced it with fbuff, comma, TCP, and then just an IP address and a port number for VNC to work. And hey, we're at least back in business. So but I, I know, for instance, the no VNC client is used by Proxmox as well. So there's that too. There's that. Probably they should just Updated? I don't know. <laughs> so um, while you were explaining that, I was uh, looking through the no VNC code and found that there's a no VNC proxy, which uh, you? so if you go down to server requirements in the readme. Okay, so latest release is 1.5.0. Maybe if I pester Chris enough so they just update it, it will magically start to work. I don't know. It might solve your color um, issue. But the other interesting part is that it uh, means it wouldn't be per that hard because there is a proxy mode. So 
you could just use the unpatched beehive and that yeah. proxy. to get uh, red VNC access uh, on FreeBSD without uh, the rest of Trina's call. Possibly, possibly, but I, I, I want the rest of Trunas to work <laughs> currently. Yes, so. you do. <laughs> um, so what did you, okay. did you find a port for VNC? Oh, thank you, you posted something. Let's see, pub on yeah. GitHub, what about, do, 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 do. I'll just drop your links in. So do we see any amount of web VNC imports or just this proxy? Because don't get me wrong, a port might be smart. It is a client, no more, no less, which has a few dependencies. But if you can, you know, you could ironically perhaps slip in the destination in Proxmox and aim at TrueNAS because, well, VNC is VNC is VNC. So just saying. <laughs> It's a client, um, or your phone. Or and your... we already have ports for no VNC and no VNC web sockify. Okay, I would love to know what is needed to just make that, you know, do a hello world. Here's our here's our VNC client. Uh, fresh words. Did you beat me to finding that, or shall I go find it? You, boom, fresh board. So you got the search. Thank you. Um, does that component look at all familiar to anyone? Jan, what would it take to spin up like what a really, I guess, dumb either web server or does it work standalone or what? Can you we... need a um, WebSocket to uh, VNC proxy and that's just WebSockify, I assume from web the... WebSockify. Yeah. They, they, you see a lot of from a the lot, middleware. And then you probably want to put some kind of authenticating uh, HTTPS server in front of that, like engine access mm -hmm. reverse proxy. Yeah, there, there is no, there is no uh, authentication in the VNC interface in TrueNest. No password even. Password for for VNC, yes, you can okay. set a password it's... for VNC, but it's all unencrypted. It doesn't yeah. even work if you if you force the UI to HTTPS, then uh, the the VNC interface in the web doesn't work. Oh really? Oh goodness! Oh goodness! Yikes. Okay. So you need to uh, leave HTTP open and just use HTTPS, but you cannot enforce it. Uh, okay, that's that, that should right there. Probably, it should probably be, be uh, proxying that. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. So tell me more about WebSockify. Is that another port to care about? Those two ports probably work together to uh, make it possible, yes. You would use the web Sockify, uh, and then you have to host the no VNC server, and potentially it could be somewhere else. Okay. So one part hosts the website with all of the yep. JSON on the right origin, and then bam, you get to use the web socket and through the web socket channel the VNC protocol and use it in a browser with JavaScript. Is it this Python Sockify um, on screen? Yep. Okay. No, wait. Maybe it's maybe uh, it's no VNC web sockify. Oh, okay, cool. Then let's that's a port. Uh, it's the second hit in the search I linked to. Okay. Uh, where's my cursor? Mm. Found it. Boom, no VNC web suckify. Thank you. Suck it to me. There is no container. Uh, not updated in nearly a year. I'd be curious about upstream. Let's take a look. And two months ago. So dare I say that itself is seemingly out of date. Yep, by one point release. Okay. Come on, I'm clicking. 
Come on. Hmm. Darn computer. Am I frozen? Nope. Hmm. Okay. Well, so then no VNC with its own WebSockify, and then you said perhaps proxy it behind a reverse proxy or something for your safety and convenience? Um, I actually, I, I don't think at the moment that this is of, of special interest to the FreeBSD community in general and then the VHAV community, because you only need this if you want to have a VNC in some kind of proprietary UI, in a, in a web UI. If we're, working, um, yes. if we're working with standard tools, you can always use Apache Wacamole, for example. Yeah, right. Right up is coming. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> sure. Oh, probably right. next. Please work. Please work. Come on, computer. Be good. I mean, the IX Systems needs this because they want to present just like Proxmox in the web UI of yep. their appliance, a VNC client. Boom. That's taking its time. You can do it, little computer. Okay, web sacrifice. So... Okay, well, um, there you go. I will lose this link. Anything else related to that? I, I do see how someone just may want to say, okay, users, go here and uh, note Apache. And are you... I forget, are you currently using Guac or not? Pardon? Are you currently using guacamole or not? Yes, yes. Sure. Oh, okay, cool. Good. Well, great. And uh, I'm sure I, my previous self would have asked about any blog posts and such, and no. I probably provided them. Okay. Uh, no, not not. Okay, well, uh, while we were chatting earlier, Patrick, it sounds like you've been using SNMP with Observium, you found that BSNMP in FreeBSD base is not very easily extended. There is a package to do so, but it might be currently broken, such as life. Anything else on mm -hmm. SNMP or such? No, not, not quite. Cool. We know. The last time I toyed with BSNMP, the BSNMP UCD port did work. You okay. need to install the port and yes. place one line of configuration into yes. the SNMP d.conf file, and then it will have UCD based MIPS. But I found the specifically the, the host resources MIP uh, seems to be much better in Net SNMP. And as I said, Net SNMP is easily extendable by Correct. arbitrary shell scripts. You can Correct. configure. Uh, output the contents of this, output the results of this shell script under this OID. And BSNMPD just does not have such a feature. And I'm still more of a sysadmin than a developer, so anything that can be done by configuration without coding, of course, is great. Yes. And I heard a comment since the last call that BSNMP is a bit memory hungry. Okay. Which is relative, but I mean, a few, a, a few megs rather than what they were expecting. Anyway, uh, Jan, did you see Entrenig's bits on the net graph retry and the abandoned review that helped where he yeah. raised a sys control value? I don't think Entrenig will be joining. I will push that down and get to that later. Um, Go ahead. So, um, if I understood correctly, one of the problems is that um, the default queue length of network interfaces in FreeBSD is just 50 packets. Uh, real drivers normally provide a much higher value and there is no good way to, or there is no API in the user space to bump the queue, maximum queue depth of this uh, net graph interface, uh, which is what causes the drop queues. Um, because the queue is just too short. And the solution, uh, the quick and hacky one, is to just bump the loader tunable uh, to Correct. raise the default queue length. Uh, oh, 
I guess the punchline was that it's it's handled automatically by other interfaces, but with NetGraph, it's just stuck at the 50. And while you might need to go as high as these values, the 4096, it can be bumped up slowly. Anyway. Increase it to 4,000 or something and reboot and try again. So Rod thinks the 4,000 is overkill, but that's to be left to the reader. Uh, uh, if it's overkill, 4,000, um, an array of 4,000 pointers is not going to bring down the kernel unless it's unlocated on the stack. Okay. So uh, it's a safe bet to, to try. Yep. Use something too crazy. So that if there's any suboptimal uh, asymptotic performance, if the queue gets too long or something, yep. that you're not suffering from that. And memory and pre allocations aren't too bad. So just Try it out. Please report back. Yes. So you had some ideas for using quiz with 9PFS. There is a great talk. Mm, for from building a quiz lookalike. Can. A quiz lookalike. Uh, show of hands from Patrick and Andrew. Have you heard of quiz? No. OK, it is quite cool. Only in high video. school. <laughs> Only in high school, boom. Uh, so there the... is also a BSD CAN talk that has been posted. So go ahead. It's, it's like a, a almost like a, a beehive user-facing application that you can control C quit out of. So, so it's basically a way to treat, uh, for development purposes, to treat a virtual machine like a process so that you have basically standard in and standard out and error. Yes. And then control C kills the virtual machine and you can easily pipe into it a system console and it's to make it easy to quickly, for example, do ZFS kernel development. That's the motivation. Script around it. And so that you have a short turnaround time and easy to automate rather than the mess that is, uh, okay, I have to build a release image and I have to automatically yep. install that or I have to create a VM image yep, and yep. then boot that, customize it, shut it down again, run the test and so on. It would be a lot nicer if you could use 9PFS to just uh, use the installation you have in a directory instead of having to wrap it as a file system. And it would make um, sharing the modifications back a lot easier as well without having to go through the trouble and special case of using NFS, which is a, doesn't, is even further removed from your no, normal local file systems right. and text and so on. Yeah. There's the repo. Mm. Now, does does he modify Beehive or does it simply no? It's poke KVM in based. Ah, uh, yeah. KVM so far. Right, right. Yes, this is okay. <laughs> so far, it's a way to run FreeBSD or or Linux on top of QEMU KVM. Got it. But there's no reason why we can't have the nice things. The, right. We like nice things. I am um, a fan. Uh, his uh, BSD camp talk is worth watching if you haven't already. Rob is a delight. Um, BSD cam video Rob Norris. Quiz, tiny VMs for kernel development. And any and all apologies for being in the audience. and commenting and being a jerk. I don't know. Uh, there's, oops, whoa, boom, there's the video all mangled as a link. Edit. Boom, link. Okay. Let me pause that because I think you'll be unhappy to hear that. Okay. Uh, the video is great. BSD can video. Okay. So enjoy that at your leisure. You have a nice weekend coming up. You can entertain the family with 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 quiz uh, news. I mean, I don't know about the control C part of it, but as far as uh, 
standard in, standard out, I you know I would think we could just hook that to serial. But exactly. Um, or to something like expecting to just talk to a TTY, uh, or just your current TTY device, but you would have to have something which channels with control C. So for that, you kind of need to create your new PTY and then forward basically be a transparent tunnel except for control C. Yeah, I mean, yeah, control control C is the one thing that I that, that would require or potentially more other. Maybe you want to intercept other control sequences as well. Like, uh, halting, for example, you probably, if you receive a, a request to, uh, and if you lose the foreground, so that job control works and so on. Well, if, if you're using the, if you're doing it like a command line type thing, I would expect that you're not interactive. So you want to intercept all of those uh, signals. I think the idea is that it is able to be interactive, but it should be uh, scriptable. Okay. So, uh, may, so like a very script down expect. So similar or what? Um, uh, that, not not one. Uh, What's a uh, HashiCorp's tool for Vagrant? scripting installations? Vagrant, not launch, exactly. Um, be. Okay. Where you say, okay, when I see this prompt, then print this line, kind of stuff. Uh, but the, that's maybe required if we can't get it all perfectly lined up. Because if you have the ability to, for example, because you're using a shared file system, write the bootloader config file so that you don't have to uh, interrupt the boot and then type in commands to set the root file system and so on. But instead you can just have it take the default file system uh, and so on. Then that would be very nice in my opinion because then it, the wrapper becomes a lot thinner. Until it may be a good idea to just have a flag in the Beehive uh, console driver to uh, interpret control C as a shutdown request. Interesting. I hear the arrival of in-laws. Do we have anything else to discuss? 1739. If not, let's call it good and I will go become a good host. Um, anything else? Nope. Enjoy the remainder of your day. Thank you. Likewise, yeah. thank you so much. Like and subscribe. Talk to you soon. Bye, folks. See Bye. you.